Greetings, future healthcare heroes. Welcome to the Nursing Milieu channel. We're here to guide you through the intricate world of nursing, one topic at a time. Today, we'll be diving into the fascinating realm of pharmacology. We'll explore the most effective method to study by body systems, understand drug classes, and decode the mysteries of drug metabolism and excretion. We'll also touch upon the essential differences between side effects and adverse effects. Stay tuned as we break down this complex subject into manageable nuggets of knowledge. Firstly, grasp the concept of a drug class. So, what is a drug class? Simply put, a drug class is a group of medications that work in a similar way or have a common mode of action in the body. These drugs are often used to treat similar types of conditions. Let's take antibiotics, for instance. All antibiotics are designed to fight bacterial infections but they do so in different ways. Some destroy the bacterial cell wall, while others block protein synthesis. Despite these differences, they all fall under the class of antibiotics because their primary function is to combat bacteria. Next, consider antihypertensive drugs. These are medications used to manage high blood pressure. But, like antibiotics, they don't all work the same way. Some antihypertensives relax blood vessels, while others slow heart rate. Yet, they are all part of the antihypertensive class, Understanding drug classes is vital because it gives you a broad understanding of how different medications work. It's like looking at a forest from a hilltop. You won't see every tree, but you'll understand the general layout. This perspective is crucial in nursing. You may not remember every single drug, but if you understand the class, you'll have a good idea of what a drug does, how it works, and what side effects to anticipate. And not to forget, knowing drug classes also helps when it comes to patient education. You can explain to patients why they're taking a certain medication, how it's supposed to help, and what side effects they might experience. This knowledge enables you to provide holistic, patient-centered care. So, how do you study drug classes? Start with the basics. Learn the main classes first, then delve into the subclasses. Use visual aids, create mnemonics, and practice, practice, practice. Remember, understanding drug classes provides a solid foundation for your pharmacology studies. By mastering this, you're well on your way to acing your pharmacology exams and becoming a competent, confident nurse. Now you have to know how to study the function of a drug. Diving right into it, understanding how a drug works is integral to mastering pharmacology. Each medication has its own unique way of interacting with the human body, and this interaction is what we call the function of a drug. When we talk about the function of a drug, we are essentially looking at two things, the intended effects and the drug's interaction with body systems. The intended effect is the main reason why a drug is prescribed. For example, an antihypertensive drug is intended to lower blood pressure. Now how does the drug achieve this effect? This is where the interaction with body systems comes in. The drug may block certain receptors, stimulate others, or even alter the production of certain chemicals in the body. For instance, that antihypertensive drug might work by relaxing the walls of the blood vessels, allowing blood to flow more freely, and thus reducing blood pressure. Understanding these interactions is vital, as it helps us anticipate and manage potential side effects. It also allows us to predict how different drugs might interact with each other in the body. For example, if two drugs both stimulate the same receptor, taking them together might result in an overstimulation, leading to unwanted side effects. Moving on, one way to streamline your study of drug functions is to group drugs into classes. Drugs within the same class often share similar functions, which can make it easier to remember their effects and interactions. An example of a drug class is beta blockers, a group of drugs commonly used to treat high blood pressure and heart conditions. All beta blockers work by blocking beta receptors in the heart and blood vessels, reducing the heart rate and lowering blood pressure. So to wrap it up, studying the function of a drug involves understanding its intended effect and how it achieves this effect through interactions with body systems. This knowledge is crucial as it aids in effective patient care and medication management. Knowing a drug's function aids in patient care and medication management. Moving on, let's delve into drug metabolism and excretion. Now, when a drug enters the body, it undergoes a process known as metabolism. This is essentially the body's way of breaking down the drug into substances that it can use or eliminate. The main organ responsible for this is the liver. Think of the liver as a sort of processing plant. It uses enzymes to break down drugs and other substances into metabolites. Some of these metabolites are active, meaning they too can have an effect on the body, while others are inactive. 
The metabolites, whether active or inactive, then need to be excreted from the body. This is where the kidneys come into play. The kidneys act as the body's filtration system, removing waste products from the blood and excreting them in urine. However, not all drugs are excreted in the urine. Some drugs are excreted in bile, which is also produced by the liver, while others may be exhaled through the lungs or excreted in sweat or breast milk. So why is this knowledge crucial for nursing practice, you might ask? Well, understanding how a drug is metabolized and excreted can help predict how long a drug will stay in the body. This information is essential when determining the correct dosage and frequency of a drug. It can also help predict potential drug interactions. For instance, if two drugs are metabolized by the same enzyme in the liver, they might compete for that enzyme, leading to an increase in the level of one or both drugs in the body. Additionally, knowing how a drug is excreted can provide insight into whether a patient's medical conditions might affect drug elimination. For example, a patient with kidney disease may not excrete drugs as efficiently, potentially leading to a buildup of the drug in the body. Understanding drug metabolism and excretion is key to predicting drug interactions and possible side effects. Next, differentiate between common side effects and adverse effects. This is a crucial distinction that every nurse needs to understand. So, let's dive right in. Side effects, also known as secondary effects, are unintended reactions that come with the use of a particular drug. They're usually predictable and can occur even with the correct dosage. For instance, a patient taking a blood pressure medication might experience dizziness. This is a common side effect, and while it may be uncomfortable, it's typically not life-threatening. On the other hand, adverse effects are more severe. These are harmful, unintended reactions to a drug, which occur at doses used for prophylaxis, diagnosis, or therapy. Adverse effects can be serious and may cause significant harm or even death. For example, an adverse effect of some chemotherapy drugs could be a severe allergic reaction, which requires immediate medical attention. Now why is it crucial for nurses to know the difference? Well, understanding these two concepts helps nurses monitor patient reactions to medications, manage patient expectations, and communicate effectively with patients and their families. When a patient understands that a medication might make them feel a certain way, they're less likely to be caught off guard by a side effect. They might even be more willing to continue with their medication regimen, knowing that the side effects are expected and manageable. With adverse effects, on the other hand, awareness can mean the difference between life and death. If a nurse knows the potential adverse effects of a medication, they can quickly identify these in a patient and take immediate action. It's all about patient safety and providing the best possible care. So remember, side effects are common, usually mild, and come with the territory of taking a certain drug. Adverse effects are more serious, potentially harmful reactions that require immediate attention. Both are important, but understanding the difference can help you provide better care to your patients. Being aware of side effects versus adverse effects ensures patient safety and effective communication with patients. So keep studying, keep asking questions, and keep doing your best to support your patients in their healthcare journey. Now let's explore some techniques to remember different classes and uses of medication. Memorization can be a daunting task, but with the right strategies, it can become much more manageable. One of the most effective techniques is the use of mnemonic devices. These are essentially memory aids that help you recall complex information. For instance, you can create a catchy acronym or phrase to remember the names of drugs in the same class. A great example is the acronym SLUDGE to remember the symptoms of organophosphate poisoning. Salivation, lacrimation, urination, defecation, gastrointestinal upset and emesis. Another technique is the method of loci, also known as the memory palace. This technique involves associating information with specific locations in a familiar environment, such as your home. You can imagine walking through your home and seeing different drug classes in each room. The more vivid and unique your imagery, the easier it will be to recall the information. Mind mapping can also be a useful tool. This involves drawing a diagram that represents the relationships between different concepts. You can create a central node for a drug class and then branch out to individual drugs, their uses, and their side effects. This visual representation can help you understand and remember the connections between different pieces of information. Flashcards, too, are a tried-and-true method. On one side, write the name of a drug or a drug class, and on the other, write its use, metabolism, and excretion. Review these regularly and in shuffled order to reinforce your memory. Lastly, don't underestimate the power of repetition. Regular review is key to moving information from short-term to long-term memory. 
Make a habit of revisiting your notes and flashcards regularly, even if you think you've got it down. With these tips, mastering pharmacology can become a more achievable task. Finally, let's discuss how you can succeed in your pharmacology exams and courses. The key is understanding, not merely memorizing. Grasp the concepts, the why and how of things. For instance, if you understand how a drug is metabolized and excreted, you can predict its effects and side effects. Don't shy away from the complexities, embrace them, dive into them. Unravel the intricate dance between a drug and the body system it affects. This way, you can easily differentiate one drug class from another, and one side effect from an adverse effect. Also, make use of memorization techniques. Flashcards, mnemonics, diagrams, these are your friends. They'll help you remember the vast amount of information you'll encounter. And lastly, practice. Tackle as many practice questions as you can. They'll give you an idea of what to expect in the exams and help you apply what you've learned. With understanding and effective study habits, you can conquer your pharmacology exams. We've covered a lot today, but remember, practice makes perfect. To truly master pharmacology, you need to review the material and practice often. And don't worry, we're here to assist you every step of the way. Engage with us, ask questions, and let's keep this learning journey going. Before you go, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Nursing Milieu channel for more insightful nursing content. Together, we can make a difference in healthcare. Until next time, stay curious, stay dedicated.